So as you guys can tell by the title of the video today, I'm going to be explaining my labor and delivery story. I had my daughter on January 19th of 2019. She is a month old. I just wanted to come on and explain or uh, just let you guys know how the labor and delivery went. It's totally not the way I planned it. Uh, crazy intense delivery that I did not expect whatsoever. So I just wanted to go into detail and let you guys know how it all happened. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Um, I had my daughter um, when I was 38 weeks and five days. So the way it happened is on January 19th. Well, actually, my point was on January 18th. <laughs> that day, I had my 38 week um, checkup, or almost 39 week checkup, uh, with my doctor. And I, before I went to the doctor that day, I was only at a one centimeter dilated from the week before. And so when I went into my appointment that day, he checked me, everything was fine, and I was still at a one, not much progress. My um, cervix was mostly, um, what's the word, effaced? I'm not, I, you know, I've had two children and I still don't know the terms to all of this stuff. But basically, my septic was already softened enough to when I did have contractions, it would start to dilate really well. And so I, like I said, I was at a one that day and I was expecting to get induced because uh, just a little bit of history with my first daughter, Catalina. I had her, or I had to be induced with her because I made it to my 40 week mark. I really didn't have any signs of labor like I wasn't really contracting that much and I think when I was checked on my 40 week checkup I was like at a three and so my doctor asked me if I wanted to be induced and so I said yes because I just wanted to have her already and so you know her progress was you know I went to the doctor they started the medicine to start labor I had her in eight and a half hours and everything was well so when I went to get checked and I was still at a one, I expected to make it to my due date with, you know, my daughter now and have to be probably be induced because that's what happened with my first and I wasn't progressing much at all. Well, let's fast forward to that night. I had, um, went to bed and around 10.30 at night, I started to have contractions and they, um, you know, were not so strong you know I was able to get through them and I was expecting them to go away so I was having contractions starting at 10 30 and they were happening every like 10 15 minutes and I was thinking in my head let me just see how the night goes and see if they go away or if they do start to get shorter in time we will go into the hospital well through the whole night I was having contractions and they were still 10 minutes apart, 15 minutes apart. Sometimes I had them 20 minutes apart. Um, and I had some that were like 7 or so, but not very many. I still had them about 10 minutes apart. That was like the constant time in between them. And they did hurt. Like, I won't lie. Like, I was in pain when they would come. But I was able to like sleep in between them. So they started at 10.30 at night. And they lasted all the way till 2 20 a.m. and like I said I was able to sleep in between them like I would have one you know be in pain of course and then I was able to like sort of rest in between them so in my head I'm like no there's no way I'm in you know really active labor because you know if you've had a kid um, you when you have contractions they are very hard to avoid and they're very hard to get through so the fact that I was able to kind of sleep in between them now I'm not saying I had like you know was dead asleep each time but I was able to and I was in pain when I got the contractions so in my head I'm thinking let's just see how the night goes and um, see if in the morning we can go in or if they stopped or if they do get closer we'll go in you know like I said well, at 2.20 a.m., my water broke, and I was asleep, and then I felt my water break. Like, it just felt like a very strong gush of water, warm, like, waterfall just coming out. And so that's what woke me up, and I was like, oh, my God, we cannot wait any longer. We got to get to the hospital. So I woke up my boyfriend, and I told him, uh, Anthony, my water just broke. We got to get to the hospital. And I was thinking I had some time 
to of course make it. Now my hospital from where I live is about 30 minutes away, which I thought, you know, I had that time to drive over there and get all situated in the hospital. Because normally when your water breaks, you still have an hour or some time before you actually deliver your baby. Mom, well, what are you doing? I am filming. So that was not the case for me. So as soon as my water broke, I got out of bed and I told Anthony that I felt like I needed to go to the bathroom. Now, I was in a lot of pain and I was thinking, you know, now that my water broke, your contraction tissue should get super, super strong and that's when the real labor starts. And so I told him, like, I really feel like I need to go to the bathroom, so let me try to go to the bathroom first. And so he walked me to our bathroom we have in our room, that's where my water broke. Um, and before I was even able to sit down on the toilet, I walked in and I felt like this is too much pressure. Like, you know when you need to poop, it, you have that pressure, but not that much pressure. And so I put my, okay, this is a little bit TMI for some of you, but, you know, I put my hand down in that area and I felt my daughter's head. And I was like, okay. We don't got time to make it to the hospital. So I yelled, Babe! The baby's coming like right now. And he's like, what? And I literally squatted down a little bit, standing up, and he pulled down my pants and I literally only pushed one good time and she came out and I caught her. Um, when she like, I like reached my hand pushing and I caught her and put her on my chest and my daughter was born. And I was in complete shock, like, did this really just happen? And as soon as, like, I saw her, I was like, Anthony, call 911, you know, tell him I just had the baby. And so he, like, was like, what the f <laughs> So I sat down, holding her, making sure she was okay, trying to get her to cry because she didn't cry right away. And so just rubbing her, trying to get her warm. And she started to cry, and I knew everything was good from there. And so once my boyfriend called the 911, um, the ambulance showed up to my house about five minutes later. So when we were on the phone with the ambulance guy, we were in my bathroom, and I walked over to the kitchen because he told me to, like, lay flat in an area and put my daughter in between my legs. Obviously, the umbilical cord was still connected, and my, the placenta was still inside me. Now, usually when you give birth in a hotel, in a hotel... When you give birth in a hospital, when you um, have the baby, the doctor usually like pulls out the placenta and it's all done in one go. Now, you know, obviously I had her in my house, so that didn't happen. So the placenta was still in me and she was attached. So we laid down in my kitchen floor. Um, Anthony had put down a blanket and the ambulance came, checked her out, checked me out. Everything was perfect. And um, they, we were able to cut the umbilical cord at the house. Anthony was able to do that for us. And it was just all really fast experience. And they, you know, strapped me on to the gurdy, me and the baby. And they took us to the hospital to make sure, you know, I get checked out and everything was good. So she was born at 2.30 in the morning. So like I said, my water broke at 2.20, 2.23 actually. I had the exact times on my phone. And, um... She was born at 2.30 around that time. We weren't, we didn't know the exact time because obviously we didn't expect to have her. But they strapped us on, took us to the hospital. Um, I was still having contractions because you have to deliver your placenta. And so on the way over there, I was in a lot of pain still because I was having contractions. And so obviously I just had a baby. And then on top of that, I was still having contractions. And as soon as we pulled up to the hospital... I delivered my placenta and it was like, yes, I'm in relief. I didn't have to be in any more pain. And my doctor came in and he was like, muy rápido, which I mean, super quick. And I was like, yeah, she just did not want to wait. And he checked me all out. I was good. I had to get a few stitches just because I did tear just a tiny bit, but she came out super fast. So I kind of expected that. And baby was fine. I was good. Honestly, this labor compared to my first one was super easy. Like, it's crazy to say because I didn't have an epidural with either of them, so I felt the pain in both, but it wasn't as painful as my first one. And I was in labor for about four hours, which was awesome. I was like, yay, she went easy on me. And like I said, she came out in one push, 
and because I was standing up, it was a lot easier. Let me tell you girls, it's so much easier giving birth standing up than it is lying on your back because obviously gravity helped with that and she was able to come out nice and easy and the craziest, I did not expect it at all because I was at a 1 that same day and to go from a 1 to a 10 within like 4 hours seemed crazy to me but I guess it happens. Yeah, my daughter was born and I'm going to show you guys her in a little bit. Her name is Aaliyah Janae and she was 7 pounds, 1 ounce and 18 inches long. Like I probably couldn't have asked for an easier labor than that because I was in pain but not a lot of pain and I delivered super quick so I'm I'm a happy camper and I'm happy for Leah that she was small and made it easy for mama to have her so yeah let me bring her in now and you guys can meet my little baby she might get a little bit scared with the lights but come here mama so this is baby Aaliyah she is now a little bit over a month old uh, she turned a month old like two days ago but she's my little cute daughter and she is such an easy baby. All she does is eat and sleep. She's our little dark baby as you can see. She's much darker than mama but she gets that from both of our sides. My dad or my grandpa's dark and then um, Anthony's family is native so they have the dark skin as well. And she has the cutest little dimples. I wish she would smile for you guys so you guys can see. But yeah this is the little the little rascal that didn't want to wait until we got to the hospital to make her appearance but she made it easy for me and I couldn't be any more happier that she's here but yeah this is little Aaliyah can you say hi mama? she's ready to go to sleep she's been fighting her sleep right now but this is my little baby can you say hi? say hello oh I got lipstick right here so I hope you guys enjoyed my little labor delivery story. I thought it was kind of special and unique and I will always remember her birth like vividly. Obviously with my daughter, first daughter I will too. But I thought hers was just a little bit unique and crazy. Yeah. yeah. Smells good now. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed my labor delivery story. Um, I thought it was... Oh, she's not happy. Not happy? with two babies on me it was a little hard so to make it nice and quick if you guys had any more questions about my labor and delivery please leave them down below I'll be happy to answer them I don't know if I missed anything um so yeah I will see you guys in my next video and I hope you guys have a great day bye around that time we weren't we didn't know the exact time because obviously we didn't expect to have her no get out of here no that's disgusting. I didn't get it. Go sew it over there. Ow. I hurt my leg.